have also been several cases of terrorist groups in our neighborhood, including those listed by this council, reincarnating themselves as humanitarian organizations and civil society groups precisely to evade these sanctions. Such exemptions must not facilitate mainstreaming of terror entities in the political space in our region. Due diligence and extreme caution in the implementation of this resolution, therefore, is an absolute must. terrorist organizations use the umbrella of the humanitarian assistance space to raise funds and recruit fighters. Our concerns emanate from proven instances of terrorist groups taking full advantage of such humanitarian carve-outs and making a mockery of sanctions regimes, including that of the 1267 Sanctions Committee. We reiterate as we did during the negotiations that under no circumstances the garb of humanitarian cover intended to be provided by these exemptions should be misused by proscribed terrorist groups to expand their terror activities in the region and beyond. India will call for caution and due diligence to be exercised while extending humanitarian assistance to proscribed entities under the 1267 regime who continue to thrive with full state hospitality in territories universally acknowledged as terrorist havens by the international community. For this very reason, India had sought in the text of the resolution a proactive role for the 1267 monitoring team, coupled with robust reporting standards and mechanisms. We regret that these specific concerns were not fully addressed in the final text adopted today. We hope that this shortcoming will be corrected in the future as and when we review the implementation and feedback from the monitoring team on this resolution. In India's context, terrorist groups from across the border, such as Lashkar-e-Taiba, Jaish-e-Mohammed, 
or Harkatul Mujahideen and their proxies thrive on assured financial support to commit barbaric acts of terror on Indian soil. Financing is the lifeblood of terrorism and countering terror financing should be an equal priority for all of us. We should also call on all UN members to fulfill obligations enshrined in the relevant counter-terrorism conventions and protocols and refrain from providing any form of support to entities or persons involved in terrorist acts.